Okay, I'm going to talk about a quick new feature in MarkEdit. I'm going to use Mac version, uh, but it's available in uh, Windows version too. So the uh, problem that I'm looking to solve um, inside the program, there's the task manager. Task manager is really designed as kind of a macro recorder, but um, as I've been filling out uh, MarkEdit 7 and 3, um, I've been adding parts of the task processing to add more conditional functionality. So that would be like the not, um, the processing multiple lines, all that good stuff. Um, one of the pieces though that's been missing um, has been control flow elements. So an example of this uh, got sent to me this week. Uh, so here's a sample file. Um, they did a merge and the resulting process of the merge um, ended up getting duplicate uh, fields like these uh, 001. 019s. So in the past, the way that you would deal with this is you would create a replacement function and you would just run it until you got zero results. Um, if you had to put this though inside a larger group of uh, edits, you would have to separate them into two spots. You could run a task on one group and then you'd have to run this particular piece and then run the secondary task. So um, what I tried to do inside of the, the task functionality, and I'll be expanding this a little bit more um, as I go, um, is adding control flow elements. So I have here the, a task that um, shows how this works. Let me go ahead and edit this task. So here we have um, what this looks like when it's completed. I'm going to go ahead and delete these so I can set it up um, for you so you can see what it looks like. So this is the task, um, the, the replace function. If we go ahead and look at it. Um, you'll see here that the, uh, the task here looks for an 019, um, then it looks for a second 019 um, adjacent to it, and then it replaces it, it uses a multi-line function. Blah, blah, blah. So, so that's how we would do that. So in the past, you'd have to run that over and over and over again until you got zero results. And so the idea is to provide control flow. So if you um, right-click on it on Windows, uh, select, well, you'd select all the the elements, in this case I only have one, so you'd select the, the task actions you want to process. On Windows you'd select those and right click on Mac, it's uh, control and mouse. And there's a new option in the uh, menu that pops up which is add script action. So right now there are control flow actions. Um, the first two that are added are uh, loops, so either a counter loop, so that the function will run X number of times, um, or a results loop, which means that it will run um, based on the results that it gets back from all of the actions that have been asked to take place. So I'm going to pick a results loop. And so inside the results loop we tell the program um, when it's going to run. So is it going to run until the number of results are greater than a certain value, um, or when they're less than a certain value, or in my case I actually want to run them until I know there's no more replacements made, and so in that case I'm going to run until results are zero. So it'll keep looping and keep making changes until it gets to a, a time when no changes are made, and then it'll uh, complete the, the action. So I'll set equal to zero, and you'll see that it creates these blocks, a start loop and an end loop. Everything inside that loop will run until the um, conditions met. And so um, inside that loop, there's an internal tracker that tracks all the results um, of each individual task and then compares it to the value that you've asked it to look at. There are some actions that always result in a completed task, um, so they'll always result in, in zero. So those would be things like the RDA helper, because there's not really a way to tell how many records that it checked. Um, things like the linked data tool. If you run those, those automatically get zeros. So there are certain task elements that probably um, are less useful inside these loops, but that's just, uh, it's in the documentation. So we have the, the loop set up. So we go ahead and save that task. So now when we go here, we can go to our current tasks and our loop task. When we run it, you can see that it runs multiple times and it completes all of the actions. And if we go down here, we see it collapses the uh, task. So in this case, it looped through that operation twice. Um, and then on the third loop, 
um, it didn't find any new actions to complete and it was done and so it, it finished all of the, uh, the changes at once. So you could see um, in some cases on the listserv we've had folks who have sent requests where they may have to run that loop 10 or 12 times because of the way that um, the, the data is structured. And so this should make it a little bit easier um, using those control flows. Um, like I said, it's, it's in the um, Windows version and the Mac version. Um, one last thing I want to point out is that um, you'll notice that inside the loops, um, they're started with the, uh, the pound sign. So inside the, the uh, task language, that's a comment. Um, that's uh, purposeful. So if you work within an environment where you have uh, older versions of MarkEdit and newer versions of MarkEdit, um, if you include these uh, control flow elements, older versions will ignore them. They'll see them as a comment, so it won't break the task that had been in place before, so it can continue to work the way that it used to. In newer versions, um, it'll recognize this as a, as a control flow element uh, not as a comment, and will uh, process it accordingly. So hopefully that will keep um, individuals who have um, mixed versions of the application for whatever reason from running into issues, especially if they um, use it in a networked environment where everybody shares the same task list.